next. If there's one thing that your opponent wants to be talking about, it is crime. And I was thinking about you in the context of this article is in the New York Times. A crime analyst, Jeff Asher, told the Times, quote, if you want to fix the problems, go run for mayor. Your governor isn't going to solve a spike in murder. And it's generally not the governor who's been failing to solve it either. I mean, what really can you do? As governor. And that's a great question. And, you know, historically, a governor does not involved in local policing issues. But I also know I represent people who are fearful right now. So I have deployed the state resources helping the mayor of New York and mayors in Syracuse and Rochester. I will literally send state police. Now, you have a lot more police than I do at NYPD. I'll still give you the help. And I'll help get cameras in the subways to make them safer. And people with severe mental health challenges who sometimes cause these crimes on our subways because they're not getting the help they need. They shouldn't be there. The state is stepping in there as well. So I have tr tripled. I, the amount of money we've spent on law enforcement to help localities is more than anyone has done in history of our state. So I'm out there supporting their efforts, as well as the violence disruptor programs where you grab the young people before they make that wrong decision. So I'm doing all this. Not that it's in the job description per se as a governor, but I represent the people of New York. I understand their concerns about the safety of their kids, so I'm trying to step up and be helpful. So, yes, you're right about where the issue truly lies, but the Republicans across the country are so successful at weaponizing one issue against all Democrats, whether they have a responsibility, any role whatsoever, and that's, that's, what's being hit, you know, that's what a lot of Democrats are getting hit with. I have to ask you, do you see your race as part of the fight for democracy? Hell yeah. I really do. Because you have someone who voted to overturn a presidential election with all the evidence to the contrary. I mean, all the myths were debunked early on. And Lee Zeldin knew that. And he still stood with Donald Trump. I even asked him a question in a debate. Did you think Donald Trump was a great president? He could have stood back and said, well... You know, he listed all his accomplishments, and I said, I'll take that as a resounding yes. So we have someone who worships at the altar of Donald Trump, who's used to power not to vote to help fund our police or to help children or send more money back to the state for infrastructure. He uses his power to get closer to Donald Trump and truly wants to be the next Donald Trump for the state of New York. And he's very close to Ron DeSantis in Florida. He came here, Ron DeSantis, and says we can make... New York be the next Florida. Well, last I checked, they don't exactly respect women's rights and the right to choose to have an abortion or not in the state of Florida. So people need to know that's the path that they're not, we don't have to worry about whether they would do it. That, they've already said they'll do that. They are crystal clear in what they would do. Anti-choice, anti-gun safety legislation, and throwing out all the rights that we cherish as part of our democracy and supporting the insurrectionists and won't call out white supremacists had the chance this week who support Lee Zeldin, he had the chance to call him out, and he stood down and refused to. That, to me, is an attack on democracy and who we are as a nation.